All right, we're going to our guest. I really appreciate him joining us. Dent Research Director, formerly a uh, high-level analyst uh, at Bain Capital. I'm not going to get into his MBA from Harvard and the rest of his degrees. HarryDent.com. Uh, and he joins us. He's the best-selling author of The Demographic Cliff. He accurately, of course, uh, has predicted uh, what we're now currently seeing and many other major trends. He has a bunch of charts we're going to be going over. I'm going to try to shut up in limited time and uh, let him go over all of this with us. Uh, but obviously, since he was on with us uh, about three weeks ago, a lot has developed with the jobs numbers and other issues and the factory orders really showing that what he predicted, unfortunately, is spot on. We now have the Fed chairman coming out two days ago on Monday and saying, yes, uh, the numbers are bad. The economy is not in good shape. Uh, so they've gone from saying everything's fine, drink the Kool-Aid, you're going to go to heaven, Jim Jones loves you, uh, Ben Bernanke loves you, Janet Yellen loves you, Obama loves you, everyone loves you, Boehner loves you, the Pope loves you, everything's green pastures, to now signifying things are in trouble. So what do you expect to happen now? You actually predicted they wouldn't raise rates. You say they're still not going to do that. Uh, Mr. Dent, thank you for joining us. Yeah, Alex, I'm, I'm also warning people, especially today, that I think there's another mini crash coming. We saw one in late August, and the market was down over 10% in five days. Uh, I think that's going to happen between today and next Friday. So so little over a week, we could see the markets drop 10% or more again. I, I, you know, I've got one chart you can show where I went out to our subscribers recently and said, hey, <clears throat> you know, we, we've got one more wave down in this first wave down and this is only the first wave of many coming over the next year and a half and it looks like it's got another sharp wave down it'll be like 15,300 uh, at a minimum and maybe as low as 14,200 on Dow so that's you know that's 10 percent 15 percent from here so we're just warning people everybody keeps thinking oh this is a correction it's over that's what Wall Street keeps telling everybody this is the beginning of a major crash that's going to be stronger than 2008 was uh, because we've only created a greater bubble with all this endless quantitative easing and zero interest rates forever. And so we got another bigger bubble that's going to burst, but it's going to burst over the next year and a half. Uh, real quickly, the next slide so it says called Dow Crash Comparison. It says, what would happen if this crash in the same time frame took a similar pattern to from late 2007 to early 2009? And we're already following this pattern and, and going down here the next week would bring us very close in line with this pattern. Then we get another bounce. But what we've been warning people, Alex, is that this is just the beginning. The worst crash will come probably in the first half or so of next year. It, it's, it's the middle wave down that is usually the worst. So, so people should use these rallies. The market keeps, when, when, when the market crashes like this, people get too bearish, too many people get short. And so the big traders see that and then they just blow them out. They, they drive the market up to what's called a short squeeze and they blow out all these people's uh, stops and stuff. And that causes short rallies like we just saw. But we warned our, our subscribers this morning, this is one of those short squeezes. The market's likely to reverse sharply down. So don't believe it. And already today, it looks like the market is reversing. So we're saying this is a good day to get out. If we do have another 10% or more crash, even with the bounce to follow, we may not get back to these levels. Sure, and you were on a month and a half ago, uh, the exact dates are on Infowars.com, and you said within two weeks this is all going to start, and two weeks later that was the next big drop. Yeah, you know, I mean, there, there are times a year when, when you're um, ready to have a crash like this. There's times from mid-August to mid-October is one of those times when, you, when you're most likely – to have a stock crash, and, and that's exactly what happened. This crash got serious in mid-August, uh, crashed into late August, it bounced, and now it looks like it's gonna crash again into mid-October. So this is par for the course. We'll probably see the worst for now in the next week and a half, but then there'll be another bounce for a month or so, and then the big one will come after that. So, so I'm just trying to get people to take this crash seriously. Don't listen to your stockbroker, don't listen to the analysts, don't listen to the financial media. All of them are cheerleaders, like you were saying, for, hey, everything's fine. Nobody wants anybody to panic. This isn't about panic, panicking. It's about realizing the governments have created the greatest bubbles in history, real estate, stocks, even gold, everything. And now these bubbles have to burst just like they did before. There's only one thing to do. Get out of the way. Mr. Dent, unfortunately, you've been proven right. I mean, we're sitting on top of this giant bubble. I liken it, as you know, to living on top of an active volcano. I mean, we know it's going to erupt sometime. The bigger question is, 
you've been scarily, uh, eerily accurate on the, the, how this would start unraveling. But as you said, there could be a lot of different triggers, a major city going under, a state going under, Puerto Rico, uh, a European country, Europe. Both their prime minister and president say they're, quote, in total war. And now there's just rioting in the streets and murders and raping. I mean, the world is obviously already to a great extent in a unevenly distributed depression. Yeah, it is. And governments are fighting it with quantitative easing. Quantitative easing is a way of keeping a depression or deflationary deleveraging of debt and bubbles from happening. So they're just pulling out a fire hose trying to prevent something that's inevitable. The sooner these bubbles burst, the sooner real estate becomes affordable for young couples again. You know, the sooner all these bubbles burst so, so investors can invest in the long term and get some returns. If you buy stocks right now, the best historical models say the best you would expect is a minus one to 2% per year loss over the next 10 years. In other words, you're almost guaranteed to lose money for a long period of time because stocks are so overvalued. So. So yeah, that's what we're saying. You have to recognize this is the bubble. The next chart's a very interesting one, and I've shown it before, and I've added one dimension. It's called the papal visit omen. The Pope only seems to come over here at the top of bubbles. Uh, so we look back at the last major peaks, which I also call a megaphone pattern, higher highs. Each bubble takes us to higher highs, and each crash takes us to lower lows. That's why I've been saying on your show now for several months, that the next stop on the Dow, probably late next year, early 2017, is like 5,500 to 6,000. And by the way, let me just stop you. We may have to hold you a little bit past 33 if you can do that because this is so important. But you're a scientist when it comes to economics. That's what you did for Bain. That's what you were taught at Harvard. You've, been, you've got a great mind, obviously. You're one of the best out there. We don't obviously know why they come at the peak, but that's what I said myself without even knowing you had this papal chart. I'd miss this one. Was It seems like Pope's come over here because I went and looked right before a crash and right before global upheaval, they'll do these big Western tours. And so it's not a good omen. And you look at the chart, it's dead on that after a Pope comes uh, in 99, 2008, 2015, it drops right after. As a scientist, uh, what's happening here? Well, you know, when somebody's going to do a tour like this when people feel the best, you know, and so, so you know, this is a time where, where uh, this could happen and everybody wanted to happen. So I think that's probably the reason. Of course, this is not the reason. I. So he's here to scoop offerings. Huh? So he's here to get offerings. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's a good time to do it. it. It's easier to do this and get great crowds and acceptance when things are good and everybody's kind of happy. Um, you know, you come during depressing times and then. People were feeling like, oh, my gosh, you know, things aren't right and something's wrong with the universe. That's not the time to come out and, and promote your uh, uh, your religion, basically. So, so you know, it makes sense in that way. But the most important thing is that we're in bubble. No, I get it. He's sharing the sheet before their financial slaughter. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, again, this is not intentional, but this is this is the type of thing that happens. Sure, the Vatican Bank knows what's going on. It says, hey, Papa, time to get over there. Because it's about to be lean times. We need to get a little bit of more money in the old piggy bank for the jet copters. Mr. Dent, HarryDent.com, joins us. What else do folks need to know about the trend we're going into? I mean, I think we've gone from saying you're being proven correct to now the Federal Reserve is admitting this. We can put up the statement. It was in the Associated Press um, where the head of the Fed said that, you know, these, these numbers are troubling for the economy. And then we have the former head Bernanke say... This shows that the economy is in trouble. Uh, are they admitting that now because they know it looks too stupid to keep denying it? Or what does that signify? Well, well I'll tell you what, Alex, the, the biggest triggers, you said, said there's many triggers. Yeah, one's the weakening of our economy because of demographics. The euro crisis is obvious. That's never going to um, come out of it without unraveling. But the two biggest triggers right now, number one is this chart I have, China. The China bubble is finally bursting. I've been harping on this for years now. Greatest bubble in history, stocks, real estate, especially real estate. And it's finally crumbling despite the government buying their own stock market. And you can see here, this has got another wave coming down and it's been going sideways for over a month in narrow range. And I've been warning people, this is gonna probably the big, biggest single trigger of this next mini crash. And I, I don't go to bed at night, Alex, without checking the China market that's about 14 hours ahead of us. So so that's another important indicator. I think you're going to see that down. 
uh, another 20%. It's already been down 45%. And then we got a final chart, the oil chart. Every time oil goes down, oil companies get hit, frackers get crucified, debts start to fail, and whole countries get hit. So the oil, we've been warning, the oil keeps cracking down. It broke out down below $80 a couple of years ago. And we said, this is it. Oil is going to keep going down towards 10 to $20 a barrel. And oil looks like it's getting ready to break back down the 30 to $32. And again, that's just going to show Wall Street and investors, the frackers are dead. They have, they have it's a trillion dollar industry, $600 billion in leveraged debt and junk bonds and, and tons of jobs, especially in Texas and North Dakota. And these companies are going to go under and never be able to come back again. They were only, it was only made possible by these very low interest rates set by the Fed so these people could borrow cheap and speculate and, and, and produce oil that's normally high cost at a favorable price. So, so the fracking thing's over. So this, this is going to be one of the triggers that causes the next debt crisis in the U.S. All it takes is somebody like the subprime crisis in 2008 to start it, and then all other debts start, start going bad and, and investors start worrying again. Investors have been, the bond markets and stock markets have been acting like we're in a hunky-dory world where everything, like you said before, geo Politics around the world is horrible. We've got a whole cycle on that that's only going to get worse for the next four years. And demographic trends are absolutely horrible. And guess who's number one going down in the next few years? Germany, the one country that most people think is strong and in a good position. They've got worse demographic trends than Japan had in the 1990s. And their, and their answer is unskilled third world labor that is extremely, on average, uh, aggressive and being filled with political class envy by socialists. What are the socialists going to do when they've been so busy trying to bleed the Christmas pig, but also they hate it, so they kick it in the face a bunch? What are they going to do when the Christmas pig rolls over and dies? Well, you know, I, I think that's one of the things that one of the good things about this crisis I'm predicting We've been doing a lot of things that don't make sense. We've been killing the golden goose. Free market capitalism kind of got married to democracy in the late 1700s, and we've been on a roll ever since, especially the developed world and now the third world catching up. But governments say, oh, no, we can't trust this system anymore with all its dynamics and its inflation and deflation. And all this power and all this wealth and all this innovation yeah. and invention and all this honor, yeah. and it's so horrible. Let's screw it up and you know, teach yeah. trendies how to pour Drano in their eyes. Yeah, yeah, they want to control it and turn it into a machine instead of a dynamic, innovative system. So they, they just wanted to grow at 3%, 4% GDP, 2% inflation, and never have a recession again. That is a formula for disaster. That's not how capitalism works. It has to have booms and recessions, has to have inflation and deflation, has to have innovation and creative destruction. And that means you have to have failure for the system to work. So they don't want any failure. They're a bunch of ninnies. And, and, and this crisis is going to force people to realize that the government and central banks couldn't just control the economy. And why don't we go back to what actually worked before they came along? We're going to go to break, come back and do five more minutes. And we'll let you get back to work. But Harry Dent is our guest. HarryDent.com is the website. Then I will cover all the other big geopolitical news. When we come back, I want to ask you this question and then let you elaborate on other points you think are important and that the audience should know. What will the political class do, though, with a lot of the new tricks they have up their sleeves that can't stop fundamentals long term? But what curveballs do you think might come out of the system? I see them building up with totalitarianism. Classic police state, I think, is their answer to these cascading bubbles bursting. And so I want to get your take on personally, when you talk to your wife, when you talk to your family, what you're doing uh, to protect yourself from clearly the social unrest and fallout I think we're going to see. The story is linked on Infowars.com. In fact, it's so important, I'm going to have it added to all the other stories we have that are linked on Drudge right now at the top, where it just says, update, Matt Drudge calls for Obama to turn over his firearms. We are really pushing this. We are really promoting this on Twitter, at Real Alex Jones, on the Facebook. If you want to defend the Second Amendment, I'm not going to even say, please do this. You need to do this. This is the type of meme that could be a major blow, just like we helped launch the meme to fire Boehner with Congressman Jones. Remember that? I'm not saying we have all the credit. We're just part of that. You are part of that as the audience, a key part.
And so if you go and send out the different memes we've put out, wants to disarm everyone but won't turn in his guns,